Now, those are the changes, well, version of changes of autumn leaves. Now, what I mean by changes are changes of chord. That's the sort of jazz terminology for a chord progression is the changes. Now, this is following on from a video that I made about soloing over or beginning improvisation over uh, the way you look tonight and following my little speech where I sat in my chair in trying to encompass what jazz was about, what problems there may be with jazz for the outside listener and indeed for the musician themselves. So I'm going to get started by just telling you what the chords are. We've got C minor 7, F7, B flat major 7, E flat major 7, the ninth one on the top there, A half diminished or A minor 7 flat and 5th, D7 and G minor 7. Some people stick the G7, they make that minor third into a major third to lead back to your root for C minor again. Now, this is the good old fashioned circle of fifths. It's as old as the hills. C minor 7, F7, B flat 7, B flat major 7, E flat major 7, A half diminished D and G. Notice that there is a little fault line though. We started with C to F, which is a perfect fifth. F to B flat, which is a perfect fifth. B flat to E flat, another perfect fifth. E flat to A isn't. That's a diminished fifth. But it's a way of basically just sort of making it all fit into an eight bar phrase so that you end up going back to your C at the beginning of bar nine. So what we've got then is these chords and they're all in a certain key. This is in G minor. Now, how am I going to improvise over eight chords? You know, how do you do it? Well, similar to the way you look tonight, you could pick one scale to begin with that allows you to at least skate over them. And then you can sort of add stuff as you go. Now, the simplest scale that you can have in a minor key is the minor pentatonic. If you want to get more stylistic, you could have the blues scale, which has an extra note in it, the sharp four. Like that. So, let's have a C minor seven. That works all right. F7. Mm, sort of. So I only used that scale and I did some sort of stylistic sort of sort of blues licks, but all based on that scale. However, if you hear that for more than about 25 seconds, you're going to start getting bored with it. You think, oh, really? But it's, it's going to be the same again. Yeah, there's that riff again. There's that. Riff. So now's the time to start picking things apart and maybe adding a note perhaps, or taking a note away. What we don't want to do is to fill a standard like this with all 12 notes vying for space. It's about the phrasing. So if you have your blues scale, but you phrase it, you've instantly raised the interest level. Played the fraction of the notes that I played before, but it has it's saying something. There is a speech being given. So C minor, C minor seven rather. That sharp four doesn't work on its own, but it's a good leader onto the fifth or the fourth. There's your fourth leading on, and the fifth. Yeah, that's fine. But how about using the E-flat as well, which is in your chord? So, could become, you could add your note. Now, of course, as a scale, that sounds really weird, but you wouldn't be playing, ideally, in a scalic way. You'd pick a sort of a random selection of notes and try to put them together in a phrase, not... 
not in scale terms like that, because it just all you're doing with that is just saying, yes, I can play a scale. Shut up! You kind of get into that mindset. But how about this? Where you've just phrased it and you've taken some of those notes. It doesn't matter if you play the same note again or the same phrase. Or the same rhythmic phrase, but you change the notes every time. So it does have that air of predictability, but with the notes changing all the time for the, you know, according to your chord, it's just saying something, it's developing an idea. And this goes back to the great composers. Start off with an idea, build upon it, play it in another key, do variations on it. It's a big thing in the, you know, with composers who you know, are composing a theme, you know, variations on a theme of something. It's taking ideas and just seeing how far you can go with them without it being a sort of random collection of stuff. So, blue scale on G is a good place to start here. And as long as you just go a little bit simpler with things, I mean, it sounds cool as a scale. And actually, as an examiner, I do some jazz exams. Whenever I ask scales, so we have to ask uh, you know, certain patterns and all this, every single time I ask for a blues scale, it's often the best pattern that's played on that exam because it's just something that sounds good. And that's that's the reason it sounds you know that's the reason that lots of people play in that using that scale, but it's not the only scale to play. And it, telling somebody not to overuse something is always you always feel as if you're deflating their enthusiasm. So we've got to try and think of it in another term. So it's just going simple with that scale. The fewer the notes, arguably, the better the solo. and gentle, it's nice and simple, it has a phrase to it. Only two notes there, yeah, I mean the rhythmic possibilities, I've kind of exhausted those, but it's, a, it's, it's another thing that you can add to your whole, your whole sort of outlook over it. That's the other thing you could do. If you play, if you strict yourself to perfect fourths, for example, like I did there. Ooh. Then you can come up with some stuff that is really off that beaten track, but I haven't thought about the notes. I just made sure that I only played perfect fourth intervals. away from that blue scale and done something else now it's too complicated I think it's just it's just kind of getting in your face but why not something like this gaps there's gaps there's space there's breathing space you've got air bubbles you know it, it can breathe now, the rest of the chords of that tune are basically the same, but in a different order. That's kind of a, a substituted version of what's there, of, of that 
that final bit. But you could also use bits of the tune in your solo. That note wasn't there for the moment. I took bits of that tune and it's actually going at half the speed with respect to your chords. So there's masses that you can do with a tune like this. You could take away the chords altogether and just play a solo, you know, two octaves apart while the, the rest of the band are going. You could go. conveying harmony. The chords that un go underneath, you don't have to hold them. You could go... I missed out the second chord completely because the ear of the audience, especially if you've got a bass player, the audience knows kind of where it's gone. Even if they're non-musicians, they go... You could take, for example, the violin, uh, the string line in uh, I Will Survive. It's, if you played it in the same key, it's an A minor originally, we're in G minor, but if we change that line, you could take a completely different piece of music and just refer that's what we when we say refer to something it's just it's a, just a little little bit of something else and that's fine the very often the best uh, sort of jazz musicians that i hear are those who are just constantly aware of what's going on but also you you hear another tune you think hmm um you know, uh, in Lou Donaldson's version of Summertime, he plays the, on a live album that he did in the 60s, he plays the Laurel and Hardy theme tune. Now, of course, you don't want to just play theme tunes all the time because it's people there. Yeah. I didn't play it properly. Stuff like that. You know, I, you know, I used to do that and people used to go, it's the insufferable one. He just keeps playing TV themes over everything. The point is, and I don't do it anymore much, the point is, is that you can refer to bits and pieces and just bring them into your melting pot of stuff. So we've got the notes then. We've also got dynamics. Rhythm. Phrasing, where you make something up that's just a little packet And then you can have variations on that theme. So we've covered our notes, we've covered our dynamics, phrasing, tone. I mean, tone control over a piano, it's, it's about the, literally the action of pressing down so that your hammer doesn't get stuck on the string or it's, it, it doesn't sound half-hearted. Guitarist, you need to get the proper tone out of the plectrum in your fingers. But it's just tonal control really does underpin everything as well. And then, of course, you've got the communication. You've got the, the, the sort of working with the listener. It's important. If you don't work with the listener, you'll lose all your gigs. You're playing to an empty room. So it's about engaging on a musical level with the listener as well. Anyway, so just to summarise, that jazz standard, if it's a minor key, have a go at the blues scale first. And then see what happens if you start adding extra notes. You restrict yourself to fourths. You could do arpeggios. You could do minor seventh. You know, well, that's a minor eleventh arpeggio. I mean, that sounds nice on its own. some that won't work however 
It's about sitting and experimenting. Jazz is about, improvising, is about taking taking leaps into the unknown, but as well as having riffs stored away to one side, you know. Or something where you could just got this pattern and you can recall it and use it before you then go off onto your next stanza. I hope that was more interesting. <laughs>